you, Cindy, for leading us. Good evening, everyone. And we wish you a merry, merry Christmas. We are glad you are here uh, with us tonight, giving up your time to come and worship King Jesus. Listen, we are glad you entered into this place uh, to come and worship Jesus tonight. Uh, what a year, or what a last two years, many of us have experienced ups and down, downs, trials, challenges. But one thing that has remained constant is the God who came 2,000 years ago in the form of a baby, grew up in a man and walked this earth. He did not sin. He experienced all that we experience is the same God, Jesus Christ, who is still sovereign, who still cares, and he draws near to his people. And we, we hope tonight that you have an experience with the Lord Jesus like no other, that you come to worship him and he draws near to you this Christmas. Merry Christmas, and let's worship together. Why don't you stand as we sing together? Merry Christmas, everyone. I want to invite you to put your hands together. Let's sing this out. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us
put our hands together. Well, again, Merry Christmas. Before you take your seat, I just want to invite you to turn to somebody next to you, wish them a Merry Christmas, and let them know you're glad that they're here.
Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. It's so good to see you. Welcome to Crossroads Christmas Eve service. We're so glad you are here and have chosen to worship and celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here. A special welcome to those of you who may be visiting from out of town or maybe have chosen to join us for the first time. We're so glad you are here and we'd love to meet you. After today's service, please stop by the Take 5 table outside in the lobby and take five minutes to tell us a little bit about you. We'll tell you about ourselves and welcome you, welcome you personally to our church. Now, you should have picked up a candle on your way in. Did anyone not get a candle who needs one? If you need a candle, raise your hand and some lovely people whom I happen to be related to will bring one to you. So, Oh, we also have uh, lighted uh, lights with batteries for kids if anybody needs them. So, everybody good? All right, very good. Well, um, one thing before we stand and sing again, uh, please join us on Sunday for worship. Our service is at 10 o'clock. We'd love to see you here again as we continue to celebrate uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. So with that, will you please rise and let's sing together. Yeah. 
be seated. Good evening. Uh, tonight's reading is a selection of verses. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. Good, good news, great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. The world waits for a miracle The heart longs for a little bit of hope Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel A child prays for peace on earth And she's calling out from a sea of hurt Oh, come Oh, come, Emmanuel. And can you hear the angels singing glory to the light of the world? Glory The trial breaks with the tears of a mother. The baby's cry is the sound of a love. Come down, come down, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. 
The world waits for a miracle. The heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come. Oh, come, Emmanuel. Amen. God with us. Well, the next part of this service, we are going to hear from some very, very special guests who are all across the world, some of you may know. And so one of the things we get to do here at Crossroads is support missions and missionaries and church planters and things around the world. Those things that we are hope to double in our giving next year, how about a million dollars double? Like today, yes, praise God for that. As the gospel advances, as the impact, as our prayers and our financial resources go to support our missionaries and missions around the world. And so they are here tonight to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Fix your eyes on the screen.
to see God's word advancing around the world. And because of your generosity, we were able to give an extra blessing this year to our missionaries around the world. So will you bow with me as we pray for those uh, out on the field advancing God's word? Lord, thank you for the work that you call us to do, both here stateside, both here on Coon Road, Gary Avenue, but also around the world, God. That you raised up men and women to go and share the message of hope, the true story of Jesus coming into flesh, into our darkness, into our chaos, and giving us back to the Father on his way to the cross. Lord, thank you for this season that we celebrate, that Jesus Christ is the very reason for this season, that he is the hope, that he is the light, he is all we need, God. So, God, we pray for our missionaries. We pray for the ministries that they are, are doing and will embark on the next year. God, we pray and we ask that you would bless it. Would you multiply it, God? Areas that are, are harmful and, and challenging, God, would you just let them excel right through? God, conversations and men and women, they are raising up in next generation and missions trips. God, we just pray that you give them all they need to continue to go forward in your name. God, we thank you for this church. We thank you for this body. In Jesus' name, I pray. Why don't you stand with us as we continue our mission? Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is a night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared in the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for you.
right, go ahead and be seated. Let me, right off the bat, just say how much I appreciate a church that values worship. Thank you, John, for moving furniture. Appreciate that. How much I appreciate a church that values worship. There is something so precious about God's people gathering together, and whether it be through the reading of the Word of God, which is fundamental to worship, whether it be through beautiful song, uh, lifting high the name of Jesus. So thank you for participating in that. Let me also say, Kayla, before you walk very far, Terry, Sam, by the way, double bass, love that, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, let's say thank you, Reuben. We really appreciate you. Kayla, I want you to hear in front of God and all these people what a blessing you've been to our team. I know you're fairly new. She has taken such a high ownership. She loves this place. She loves leading us in worship. So, Kayla, special thank you to you. And also, Rick and others, volunteers, so you may see people up here, but but dozens of volunteers, whether it be downstairs with children in the back there setting up, have done so much. And uh, thank you for serving in that way. Often, often unknown and unheralded. We uh, really appreciate that. Pastor Tay, thank you for firing us up. Uh, we've, we've sort of been dripping out, but we start a spiritual growth campaign next year, uh, probably May, April, May. And one of the elements of that is to raise a million dollars for missions. We are going to double, more than double what we already give. We already tithe. We already give beyond 10% to missions. We're going to more than double that. And that's going to result, God willing, in more than a million dollars being given to missions because we are so committed to getting the message of the gospel out. It's what we're about. It's the purpose of this church. So thanks for sort of warming us up with that. And so I appreciate that. Yeah, right? I guess so. Why not? We are, uh, whether it be church planning, whether it's going to be adding more missionaries, uh, increasing the level of support for our current missionaries, love that a church celebrates the right kinds of things. All right. Uh, how do you feel about mysteries, books, movies? You like them? Okay. For the most part? Yeah, good. So uh, mysteries typically, movies or books, roll out one of two ways. Sometimes you know the who, like who done it, and the movie's about figuring out what happened. Okay, the rope, which is an old Hitchcock mystery that's kind of that way. You know who did it. You're trying to figure out what happened. And, and, and then, um, and then there, it's okay. We, the sound of a crying baby is the best sound in a church. Thank you for bringing that baby out tonight. So, uh, so and maybe I'll talk less dramatically. It will help not startle this poor kid just waking up. It's like, what happened? Where am I at? Sometimes... You hear about the what, and the movie's about figuring out the who. John chapter 1 approaches the gospel Christmas story. Okay? There, there's really no Bethlehem. There's really no wise men. There's not shepherds or angels in, in John chapter 1 as he writes about it. He starts with the what. And, and then eventually, we're going to see it tonight, verse 14, verse 17 is where we'll be tonight. He gets to the who. So, so the mystery that John presents is who is this? Because if you'll remember, we're in our series called Light, right? We're just pointing to the light Christmas time. And John 1.1 1, 1 begins this way. Let me read it to you. We, we started two weeks ago with this. So in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And over the past several weeks, and I preached a few weeks ago, Pastor Tay preached last week, uh, we, we've been unpacking, what does that mean? Uh, wait a minute, the word, God, creator, life giver, light. It's, it's all, that's the what. And it's covered these first, uh, first 13 verses of the Gospel of John. The, there, there's there's uh, a creator, God, uh, and, and Word, he express, he reveals himself, and, and he brings light, and he gives life, and great stuff. But you know what we don't get to? Who? Who is he? Now, let's look at verse 14. We're just going to look at really that one verse tonight. But let me just reread John 1, verse 1. We're going to skip the next 13 verses and read John 1, verse 14. And you're going to see they just flow seamlessly together. This is the what and then introducing the who. I don't mean the rock group. <laughs> that wasn't in my notes, but boy, as soon as I said that, I think a John Ant whistle. And anyway, all right, yeah. Uh, we won't be fooled again on that day. All right. <laughs> People of a certain age will know what I mean. The rest of you are like, can we just get back to the message? 
It's a good word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then verse 17, for the law was given through Moses. Here's the who. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So, uh, verse 14. Finally, after all those verses, we get not just to the what, God, creator, life, light, all of that, we get to the who. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the Christmas message. This is what Christmas, to answer Charlie Brown's question, is all about. That word who is the life giver, the creator, that word who is God from eternity past, he became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, that word flesh would have been a, a shot across the bow, the early uh, Roman period of this uh, book being written, because there were those who said, hey, listen, God can appear to look like us. Man, in the Old Testament, angels appeared to look like human beings. But here, John chose the word flesh, meat, humanness, flesh. That word, that creator, that life giver, that light became flesh. And he dwelt among us. Literally, he pitched his tent among us. God, the great creator, came near. Christmas forever, Christmas properly understood, forever puts the lie to every other religious expression. So often it's about how do we work our way into God's favor, sacrifice or service or giving or keeping a list or ritual. So many people labor under the burden of if I could just do a little more or make up for what I didn't do or make up for the bad I did do, then God will somehow smile on me. That's getting Christmas all wrong. Christmas is about the God who created and gives life and is eternal and feels so often out there, far away, he came near, he became flesh. It's not about us somehow pursuing God. It's about God pursuing us. It's about the light looking into the darkness and rather than saying, hey, darkness, come here, saying I'm coming there because darkness cannot overcome light. The Word became flesh. He pitched His tent. He was around us. Christmas is about God from eternity past stepping into the stream of human history, not by sending an angel, not by sending Ten Commandments written on somehow uh, blocks of granite or of stone, but in the person of a baby. As human as you and I are, God himself experienced that for and with us. God has come near. In fact, because Jesus is man, he's human in the fullest sense of that expression, because Jesus is man, he is near enough to care. I need to hear that. It's been a rough couple of years, hasn't it? And I need to know that this word who was in the beginning, he's eternal, he's with God, he is God, he's creator, he's life giver, he brings light, he's now near, and he cares. That's good. So often the gods of the nations are out there somewhere. Or the God that we concoct in our mind is somewhere beyond Saturn, sort of sitting on the clouds and waiting to zap me if I get out of line. And I'm hoping just to dodge that, he won't notice me. God came near. That's Christmas. I uh, got a phone call yesterday. Well, I say I got a phone call. My wife got a phone call yesterday. We were in the car together. And our daughter, who lives in Austin, Texas, she is very, very pregnant, 38 weeks. She called. She just visited her doctor. The doctor said, hey, listen, uh, you're not going to go as long as your due date. We're not going to let you go past the 9th of January. In fact, next week you should start walking and doing whatever you can because, you know, this guy's he's ready to go. And uh, she's very excited about that. They talked all kinds of stuff about birthing babies that I didn't want to know about. And it was all... 
And then she, our, our daughter's name's Brooke. She's got a bunch of girlfriends down there that either have just had babies or are now having babies. And so, like, they talk, 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 talk all the time. And, like, officially she needs help to get off the couch anymore. She's there. It's that far along. And she says, no, I, I, I waddle. And everybody's laughing. And she never calls me about this stuff. Like, the whole eight months, three weeks that she's been, never talked to me once about that. Now, she called a while back because something was broke around their house, wanted to know how to fix it, right? she get that, or, or her, her husband wanted to know about that. Do you know why she doesn't really call me or bother me with how far along she is or how many pounds and ounces? I, I, I don't identify with that. My, my wife, her mother, is a woman. She is all over it. And her girlfriends who are about ready to go, Man, they talk all the time because our daughter intuitively knows they understand what she's going through. Jesus Christ is not a theory. His understanding of your life and your success and your failure and your hurt and your loss and your loneliness and your relationship, that is reality because he became flesh like us. Christmas is not about God standing far off inviting us to try our best to earn his favor. Christmas is about God coming in the person of Jesus Christ into the dark and bringing with him light. Now, verse 14 brings us perfect balance, as you would expect from God's word when it comes to the person of Jesus Christ. The word became flesh. As human as you and I are, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He came near. He didn't stay far off. And here's the balance of that. And we have seen his glory, his meaning Jesus. That's the antecedent for his. We have seen his glory, the glory of the only son from a father, full of grace and truth. Sometimes, and this is a great corrective, sometimes I get a little nervous at the popular Christian expression that like Jesus is my best buddy, as though we could somehow go down to the corner bar and sit on a stool and tell him our problems, and he'd be like, nah, it's okay, here, have another beer. Don't, don't, Don't ever think that. We, we've, we've seen something of the glory of God in the person of Jesus Christ. You know, like he opened the eyes of the blind because he's creator. The deaf heard, the mute could speak, those who were lame could walk. He raised the dead. He's not just your buddy. He's God. And we need to know that. We need to have a sense of the The glory of Jesus Christ. And that glory is expressed in grace, thank God for that, and truth. Grace is us getting what we don't deserve. Grace is light coming into the darkness. Grace is God knowing exactly who we are, the depths of our heart, and loving and welcoming and calling us into the family in spite of that at times. Truth is what makes grace so precious. The truth is we are created in the image of God. We are created for the purpose of relationship. We are created with dignity and beauty and intellect and the ability to contribute to this world. But the truth is we fall short of the thing for which we were intended. We, we at times, unwillingly or accidentally, at times willingly, fall into sin. We, we fall short. The glory we can see in Jesus Christ, we don't see in ourselves. The Bible word for that is simply sin. It's fallenness. And everyone in the world reflects that in their fallenness as humanity. That's truth, and it requires grace. Christmas is about God coming near and offering us the grace of being adopted into the family by faith. I said last time I was here, I want to make sure I don't assume that just because you're in church, you understand everything I'm talking about. Um, God came near. I want to make sure you understand the connection. What does that mean for me? Uh, Let me give you that second point. Because Jesus is man, he's near enough to care. And because Jesus is God, he's strong enough to save. Make sure I want to make sure you understand that. God, here, here's, here's the what, God became human. Didn't, didn't appear to be human, really took on flesh. Lived a, lived a perfect life, taught, miracle, followers, 
and he was betrayed, and he was found guilty, although innocent, and he was crucified, dead, and buried. It's true. In one of the darkest acts in human history, we killed the Creator who came to bring us light. It says something about human nature and the capacity for sin. But God raised him again from the dead. God is strong enough to save. You and I don't just simply need a God who is close enough and near enough to care. Of course, that's wonderful. He's got to be strong enough to take care of our sin problem. And Jesus in his resurrection from the dead demonstrated his power over sin and death and hell and the grave. Okay, great. Great. That's wonderful narrative, Scott. Wonderful theology. So what? It's a great question. The way that Jesus incarnation that is coming in the flesh, life, death, and burial, and resurrection impacts me, is that when I believe that, I'm brought into the family of God. I'm restored to that thing for which I was originally created, relationship with God, relationship with one another, and a purpose in this world. That, that, that listen, does not happen by sitting in a church service on Christmas Eve. There, there is a response to the gospel, which is, I believe that. And I thought it would be good for us on Christmas Eve to remember that. So let me give you three sort of closing thoughts. Maybe you'd call them application points on Christmas Eve that drive home the truth of Jesus, Christmas, Jesus being near enough to care and strong enough to save. First is this. Believe this, and you will receive new life. Okay, the, the, the response to this message should be, I believe that. For some of you, it's been, this is new. I don't know that I've heard it put this way. And for you, it may be time to quit trying to please God on your own and trust Him. Just believe the message. For others, maybe first time back in church in a while, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I remember that. It's time to recommit that faith. So I want to pause and lead us in a prayer right now together as a church family. For some of you, maybe in your heart you want to pray this along, and it's a time for you to commit your faith, to trust Jesus Christ, the one who came as God in a body. For others, it's maybe just time to recommit. But maybe you join me in just this moment of prayer. Will you do that? And I'll, I'll pray out loud, and maybe God would stir your heart to follow along in your own soul. Dear God, thank you for your love for me, for sending Jesus Christ to live, to die, and to rise again for me. I do believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died and rose again. And I ask Jesus Christ to forgive my sin and be my Savior, to be my Lord. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to die for me. Help me from now on to live for him. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. If you believe this, you have new life. For many of us, however, we've believed that for many years. Here's my challenge to us. Remember this, and you will enjoy new life. It's easy in the push and pull of life. It's easy in the comings and goings of the last two years of COVID. It's easy in the, the, the dislocation we've experienced to find ourselves sort of living under the power of circumstance or living in, in unwarranted fear about what may happen next. Never, for, Child of God, never forget, Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Savior, is near enough to care. He, does, he, he has not forgotten you or what you're going through. Do you, do you believe that? You need to hear it. And he's strong enough to save. See, we don't just need saving on the day we put our faith in Christ. We need saving day after day after day after day. Your, your circumstances, as painful as they may be to you or uncertain as they may be to you, are not beyond the strength of the God who sent Jesus to save. Remember that all the time. Remember. So, near enough to care, strong enough to save. Three. And I'm thinking specifically 
of whether it be tonight or it's tomorrow, as you gather together as a family, Christmas. Talk about this, and you will share new life. Like don't, don't argue politics tomorrow. Don't complain about mask mandates. That's secondary or tertiary matters. Tell your story. Don't argue denomination. Talk, talk about what it means in your life that God became human to redeem. How your life's been changed. You never know when somebody who might be far away, it might be the exact message they need to hear. T talk about this. And you'll share new life. One of the things I love about our Christmas Eve service is for year after year after year after year, we just do the same thing to close. We are going to sing Silent Night. The way we're going to do that is I'll invite, Kayla, are you singing that? And um, are we, okay, come on, yeah, come on, make your way up here, whatever musicians are helping. My wife Vicki and I are going to actually be in the front. We're going to light a candle. I'm going to invite you to stand in just a moment with your candle. We're just going to light the front couple of candles, and we're going to let you turn as we're singing and light those candles. What an example of how one person telling the next, telling the next, telling the next. By the end of this song, Silent Night, this room is going to be lit by that. All the lights will be out. We'll be singing in total darkness, and you'll recognize just how good it is. That little light can go pretty far in a dark place, so... Kayla, if you'd come and lead us, we are going to do that. Let's stand now. Vicki, if you'd join me to light the candle.
Kansas City. I did not know this. Oh, no. <laughs> that is just terrific. I really appreciate that. And she got to do it with no glasses on. That's great. Yeah. I know that's my I'm at the same point. Oh, thank you. Thank you.